in Gaelic clarsach is Scotland's oldest instrument. Appearing on Pictish stones as early as 700 AD, in its heyday, every noble home was incomplete without a harper. But when Scottish culture was repressed in the 18th century, the clarsach all but disappeared. It is only in the last 50 years that Scotland's most traditional instrument has been experiencing a rebirth. Since the mid-1960s, the number of players in Scotland has increased from only a handful to nearly 600. The harp has become more prominent in performance. The Clarsach Society, aimed at promoting harp culture and tuition, has 12 branches and over 300 members, and the annual International Harp Festival in Edinburgh attracts performers, teachers, students, and harp makers from all over the world for a week of classes, concerts, and workshops. All of this indicates a growing number of players, and because of this growth, a number of organizations have been established to serve them. The only thing that doesn't yet exist is a dedicated center for the Scottish harp, a full-time, purpose-built facility that will preserve the history of the instrument while supporting its development now and in the years to come. My name is Andrea Blumberg and I've been playing the harp for about 16 years. I first came to Scotland in 1999 to study with some of the excellent harp teachers here and I was so impressed by the musical tradition that I stayed. I've seen a dramatic increase in the number of harp players and I think that the time has come for a dedicated harp centre to serve their needs. I believe I'm qualified to start such a harp centre because of my connections and my experience both here and abroad. In the States, I worked on the Harp Column magazine as the assistant editor, and then over here at the Sounding Strings Harp magazine as an administrative assistant. I've also been involved in running harp festivals both here and abroad. Recently, I received an HND in music from Perth College, University of the Highlands and Islands, which has given me a thorough grounding in music theory and performance, in ICT and promotional skills, knowledge about the music business and the creative industries, and the experience of working on projects with other people to a deadline. All of this has prepared me for the creative project of starting a harp centre. Here's why I think that a harp centre will serve the needs of the growing community, prove to be a viable concern, and why now is a good time for it to happen. Harps such as this one, which are generally used to play classical music in an orchestra, are big, heavy, and expensive, thus limiting the number of people choosing to play them. Until a few decades ago, this was the primary instrument available to would-be harp players. Recently, a different type of harp has become more common the folk harp, which is smaller, lighter, and significantly cheaper. Now it is possible for many people to realize their dream of learning to play the harp without spending the equivalent of the price of a small car to do so. As more people buy harps and learn to play, more people begin to make them, and so there is a wide range of styles, sizes, and makers to choose from, further encouraging the number of players. From a small number of harpists just a few decades ago, there are now estimated to be over 400 players in Scotland, 800 in the UK as a whole, and several thousand in the United States. This number increases each year. This boom of harp players and harp makers has grown with very little organization. By nature, harpists are enthusiastic and social people and wish to get involved in workshops, attend concerts, find out about new music, and simply meet and get to know each other. So far, no organization in Scotland has been able to satisfy these desires on a year-round national scale. A national harp centre would fulfil those desires. Finally, 
Although the folk harp is a much cheaper instrument than the orchestral harp, it is still relatively expensive. This means that those who choose to play the harp tend to have a degree of disposable income that they desire to spend on harp-related events and materials. They would be able to support a full-time harp center. There are several other organizations already in existence which either partially serve the needs of the Scottish harpist or which serve as an example that a Scottish harp center would be a successful enterprise. They are the Clarsach Society, the Edinburgh International Harp Festival, the Irish Harp Centre, and the National Piping Centre. Here's why they serve as good examples. The Clarsach Society was first founded in 1931 and persisted as a small, local organisation with only a handful of members. Since the harp boom, it has grown until there are now 12 branches throughout the UK and even an international branch. The branches are involved in organising concerts and workshops for their members, organising weekly lessons for pupils, and maintaining a number of harps that students can hire until they're ready to buy an instrument of their own. It is a valuable organisation and has done a good job of supporting and encouraging harp players. However, the majority of staff are volunteers and they are focused mainly on their local area and their own members. A central organisation is needed to work with all of the branches and create a greater sense of cohesion between them. The second important organisation is the Edinburgh International Harp Festival, proof that people are willing to travel to Scotland because of the harp. This is a week-long festival with classes, concerts, workshops, a harp maker's exhibition, and opportunities for casual socialising with other musicians. It is attended by roughly 350 people each year, with a fair number coming from abroad. It is a well-loved event, but it only takes place for one week of the year. With a harp centre, this annual festival could be expanded into a year-round opportunity for harp and traditional music-related tourism.